All right, so today we're going to talk about birth control because we've talked about uh, pregnancy, so we have to talk about birth control. Uh, and this is more more of an FYI. I mean, so just kind of give you some information about what birth control is. But there are going to be a couple of questions on the exam, but they won't really be that hard. Uh, I just kind of want to make sure that you have been exposed to birth control. So, and know what it means and how it works and what, what actually works and what actually doesn't. Uh, so when we think about birth control, we can really divide it into uh, five types. Uh, and I'm, I'm going to talk more about birth control from a female point of view, but we, we will also talk about uh, male birth control as well. So the first one is just abs abstinence, which is no sex. So just no intercourse, no copulation. So uh, no, no sex. Um, the, ex the next, um, I guess, category would be what we call family planning or natural methods. And so I've got that on this chart here, uh, which is like using the calendar and trying to figure out when you're ovulatory and when you're not. Uh, there are barrier methods, which is something to prevent the sperm from getting to the egg. Examples, condoms, uh, spermicides, diaphragms, things like that. There are hormonal methods, which means you're going to uh, put things into the female body, estrogens, progesterones, things like that, to try to trick the body into not ovulating, basically. Uh, and those can come in the form of injectables, um, IUDs, uh, birth control pills, oral contraceptives, uh, patches, vaginal rings. Those are all examples of hormonal birth control. And we're going to go into some more detail about this. And then permanent sterilization, things like having your tubes tied or a vasectomy, okay? Uh, so the first thing I want to talk about is how good is it? I mean, what's the most effective and least effective? Because that's one place if you're, if you truly are trying to use birth, birth control and you don't want to have a baby, you need to make sure that you're using the most effective birth control that you can. Uh, and so the most effective is abstinence. You know, obviously if, uh, if there's no sex going on, that's not going to be a, uh, any conception. So abstinence is the most. Uh, but, you know, in a real world, uh, what actual birth control can we actually use? Um, and the most effective ones typically are going to be your hormonal methods. So, like the IUD, uh, implants, uh, and there's several different types of IUDs. Uh, and these are going to result in less than one pregnancy per 100 women in a year. So that's pretty effective. I mean, no, I mean nothing's 100% except for um, abstinence and some of the surgical methods. Now, kind of your bet, um, kind of the second best option are going to be some things uh, again that uh, typically use hormones, uh, like your vaginal rings, uh, your patches, injectables, and birth control pills. And so, about six to twelve women per year uh, will fail and then get pregnant on these kind of birth controls. The least effective, the ones you really don't want to count on if you if you don't plan on getting pregnant, uh, the withdrawal method. So pulling out. Uh, yeah, that never works. Uh, condoms, they break. And natural family planning, uh, where you're trying to guess when you ovulate. Uh, people that use natural family planning are called parents. All right, <laughs> that's kind of an old joke uh, because that's that's uh, not very effective either, uh, trying to figure out when you are or are not um, most likely to conceive. And about 18 uh, women in 100 will become pregnant using these methods. So if you think about test methods, I do need you to, to know, you know, the different types of birth control and which ones are most and least effective. Think about an ordering question, all right? So let's just kind of go through each one and kind of talk about what it is. So again, abstinence is just lack of sex, so no copulation, so there's uh, no, the partners are not engaging in uh, sexual intercourse, so there's no chance for the sperm and egg to come together. So it's 100% effective, okay? But you've got to be communicating with your partner. I mean, everybody's got to agree that this is what we're doing. Uh, and so that can be hard uh, when there's hormones and, and, and um, all the emotional things that go along with having a partner. So um, abstinence can be tricky. Uh, natural methods. Uh, again, these are not real effective. And so when we talk about natural methods, we're usually talking about withdrawal or pulling out and the rhythm method. So withdrawal is the removal of the penis just before ejaculation. Uh, the problem with that is it just takes one sperm, and so during arousal and erection, uh, some of the sperm may already be moving before the actual ejaculatory event, and so there already may be sperm in the vaginal canal uh, before ejaculation, so it's too late. You've, you've missed it. 
Um, so it's not a great way to do that. Uh, plus it's, you know, it's not easy. It's kind of, you know, think about the emotions and, and all the things that are going on uh, during intercourse. And so it's not very effective. Um, one in five women who practice withdrawal will become pregnant. It's very difficult for the male to remain in control and actually pull out in time. Um, the rhythm method, this is like natural family planning. And so this is when you're taking a calendar and you're marking when your periods are and you're trying to figure out when you're ovulating. And so those two or three days before, two or three, two or three days after ovulation, and you're going to um, figure out when you're most fertile and then try not to have sex during those particular times. Um, again, this is in a perfect world. Uh, it can be pretty effective, around 91%. But again, that means you know, there's still 9% out there that are going to become pregnant. Uh, typically, it's 75 because we forget to mark it on the calendar or, you know, we're just in the mood. It's a, it's a nice, fun night, and you forget, and then there you go. You're pregnant. Uh, it's, um, it's more uh, effective if you use a natural method and then along with a barrier method like a condom. Okay, so obviously, if you add layers of protection, that does help you. So the rhythm method plus a condom. Uh, will give you a little more effective. Um, but there is no safe day. I mean, so there, even on, even when a person's on their period, that's not even considered safe because women have irregular periods. There's, you know, you have hormonal fluxes. So there is absolutely no 100% safe day that you're not going to get pregnant. So not a great way to, um, to prevent a pregnancy. Uh, hormonal methods. So these are the most common. A lot of people have heard of these, like the birth control pill. Uh, so some examples of hormonal methods um, are contraceptives, like birth control pills, the oral contraceptives, contraceptive patches, uh, vaginal rings, injections, and implants. And all these work on kind of a, uh, using estrogens and progesterones, again, to kind of to trick the woman's body into not ovulating. So think about FSH and LH and the roles of estrogen and progesterone and, and all those things. So if you could take a hormonal method, you're kind of you're kind of taking over the woman's natural cycle of estrogen, progesterone um, um, fluctuations, and kind of stabilizing that and preventing the ovulation. That's how that works. So typically, you have estrogen and progesterone, and sometimes, depending on the different type of birth control, you'll have um, different amounts of estrogen and progesterone. But what it does is by having estrogen and progesterone in your system, taking it either through the skin or orally, um, or even implanted, it's going to inhibit FSH and LH. And so you're not going to have that LH surge. You're not going to have the follicle stimulating hormone allowing the follicle to, to grow. Um, it also causes the uterine lining to thin. So even if um, even if you did ovulate, the, the uterine lining is so thin, it doesn't, it's not real um, sus um, can't think of the word welcoming to the to the fertilized um, embryo possibly so it's not really going to replace the implant um, it also tends to thicken the cervical mucus so that the sperm can't get through uh, it's pretty effective about 99 percent but again not 100 percent the problem with it it does not protect you from STDs so sexually transmitted diseases it does not protect you from that so you can still get chlamydia and gonorrhea and AIDS and all those other STDs. So some pros and cons, uh, obviously prevents pregnancy. A lot of women will take it uh, not as birth control. They'll take it because it can actually cause your periods to be lighter and shorter uh, and make your cramps better. So uh, people who have irregular periods will take birth control pills or implants or injectables to try to regulate their period so that they don't have these wild fluctuations and 12 day to 46 day periods that are really heavy and they become anemic. Uh, it can decrease your amount. If you have ovarian cysts, it can help with that. It can uh, decrease the risk of ovarian cancer. A lot of women will see their acne clear up. But uh, it can mimic some of the signs of pregnancy. So you can get breast tenderness and nausea and headaches and moodiness and weight change. Uh, spotting, it can increase your risk of stroke. So if you have a family history of stroke, uh, you might not want to take it. You definitely don't want to smoke because if you smoke and take birth control, that can increase your um, chance of stroke. Uh, early studies, there may or may not be a, chain, a risk factor for breast uh, cancer and cervical cancer. Um, 
as with most things, you just maybe don't want to take it long term. Uh, give your body a break. Uh, so the problem tends to arise when you take these things for years and years and years and years. So some examples of birth control pills. Uh, the pills that you take orally, they kind of they can come in different um, formulations, different amounts of hormone. So we have monophasics, biphasics, and triphasics, which literally means they either have one type of hormone or two or three. So with monophasics, you take 21 pills, all the same level of hormone, uh, and then seven days off, you have your period. With a biphasic, you take two different uh, levels of estrogen and progesterone, uh, and then seven days off, and you have your period. With triphasics, then it's three different levels of hormones. And so for some people, they really like the triphasic because it feels more natural because your body has the cyclical um, amounts of hormones in your body. So a lot of people like these triphasics uh, hormones compared to the other ones. Uh, you can also take them for a long, long time and not take them monthly. So a lot of birth control pills are monthly, but you can take them extended. And so there are pills that allow you to have a period every three months. Uh, because you're going to take like 81 days of an active pill and then seven of an inactive. Uh, you can do um, some that will uh, give you four periods a month. And I may have done the math wrong. That may be 94. I can't remember. Uh, you, anyway, you take a, a long period of pills and you have your period, um, again, maybe every three months or every four months. Uh, and then some you take every day. And so you just literally never have a period all year long. Um, the problem with some of these extended cycles is um, some people do have spotting uh, when they take these pills, but some people don't. I did not put any um, brand names in this talk. In the past, I have, but they changed so much, so I've taken out all the brand names. It's You can easily Google it if you're trying to figure out what kind of birth control you take and figure out if you take a monophasic or biphasic or triphasic. Uh, the patch is a transdermal patch, uh, so it has estrogen and progesterone, and because it's, uh, it's going to be embedded in like a um, fatty substance, and it'll be absorbed through your skin. So the estrogen progesterone goes through your skin, and typically you'll take a patch and leave it on uh, for a week and then change the patch every three weeks. Week four, you don't wear the patch, you have your period. The problem is some people do have some skin irritation from the patch. But again, it's pretty effective. You don't have to remember to take a pill every day. You just have to remember to put the patch on once a week and just leave it on. But uh, it can be problematic if maybe for some women who are real active, exercise a lot, and sweat a lot. I have had some students tell me that it tends to fall off. So um, I don't, I've never tried the patch, so I don't know. But I have, that's one of the things I've heard from people is that sometimes it falls off if you're really active and hot and sweaty, especially here in the South, swimming, things like that. Um, there's a vaginal ring, which uh, means you actually insert something into the vagina, but it's, it, it's impregnated. Uh, that's kind of a funny word to use. The ring uh, actually has hormones in it, so yeah, I guess impregnated with estrogen and progesterone. So you put that into the vagina, and so the hormones are absorbed through the uh, vagina, just like in the patch, except instead of through the skin, it's through the vagina. And you leave it there for three weeks, take it out, and in four weeks, you have your period. So again, you only have to think about it once a month. So that's not too bad. Uh, you can have injections. So um, I think Depo-Provera is one that you've probably heard of. Um, typically, you get a shot about four times a year, about every three months. Uh, and it's really effective, 99.7% effective. Uh, again, the problem comes if you forget and don't get it uh, often enough. You know, maybe you go, ah, I can't go this week, I'll go next week. You know, you got to make sure you're, you're staying regular with your injections. But you don't have to remember to take a pill or put in a patch or a vaginal ring. So, you know, if you're forgetful, it's kind of nice. Uh, and it will actually stop your period. So if you use uh, Depro-Provera or these injections, you won't even have a period for a couple of months. Um, and then sometimes you'll take a break and then have your period. Um, a lot of people never have when they get the injections so regularly because they never have their period. But you can have some spotting um, sometimes. All right, so implants are, uh, I think, things like uh, Explanon, uh, Implanon, Norplant. Those are little rods that they inject and kind of implant under your skin. These are long-term. They last years, like three or four years. So uh, this is kind of a lot of college students like that because they're like, hey, I got four years of school. I don't have time. So they do the, the implants and don't worry about it. 
through their college years. Um, so they just put these in your body uh, uh, and usually kind of underneath in your arm. It takes about 15 minutes, an outpatient procedure, not a big deal. They're about the size of a matchstick. Uh, you can just feel them a little bit and they're really effective, like 99.95%. So this is what it looks like. Again, depending on if you have Norplan or Implanon or Nexplanon, um, it may be one or two or up to five rods that they just insert. And they will take those out uh, usually uh, three, four, five years depending on which one you're using. So you just do it and forget it for a couple of years. Um, there is something that, so maybe you're not using birth control and you have one of those, you know, nights of passion and uh-oh, forgot. Um, there's something called ECP or the emergency contraception and so if you've had unprotected intercourse uh, you really just take a really large amount of hormones uh, of estrogen and this is usually within 72 hours of that unprotected intercourse and that will reduce the chance of pregnancy and it's going to prevent what it does it floods the ovaries with high amounts of hormones and it prevents ovulation okay and it also kind of changes the environment of the uterus so that the sperm and egg don't necessarily get together. Um, so you have to do this. Uh, you take two sets of pills about 12 hours apart, and then that will stop the ovulation and possibly prevent the pregnancy. But again, it's, it's semi-effective. It's not, it's not great effective, but it is possible if, if you had an oops moment and, uh, and need to uh, try something on the, on the other side of intercourse. All right, so the barrier methods, uh, these are what prevents sperm and egg from coming together. Uh, they have a high failure rate, mostly because people just forget. You're like, oh, we'll, we'll get to it. We'll, you know, I'll, I'll put it on later. I'll put it on later, and, and you don't. So I'm just being honest. That's what happens. It's just, you know, behavior, and they break. They're plastic. <laughs> um, and so there are spermicides that you can put on, uh, which are just like a gel that kills the sperm. But again, you got to remember to do that and you know say okay we're having sex tonight let me remember to use my spermicide well you may or may not remember to do it male and female condoms again you've got to take the time to to put it on and and uh, and deal with that diaphragms uh, they go up inside the the uh, vagina again you take the time to do it cervical caps are kind of like that as well i think i have some pictures all right yeah i do so we'll get there so what a spermicide is, it's just a chemical that will kill the sperm inside the vagina. A lot of times it's either gel or a foam or something like that. It works really fast, it's instantaneous, but you, you typically need to remember to do it before copulation instead of after. If you do it after, it could be too late. So it can be effective, but only 76%. Works better if you use it and a condom or it and a diaphragm. There's two types of condoms. Uh, most people know what the male condom is. Uh, there's also a female condom. So the male condom goes over the penis where the female condom goes up inside the vagina. Um, the good thing about condoms is they do help you prevent STDs. So these barrier methods like um, condoms and the, uh, will actually stop uh, different STDs like gonorrhea and chlamydia and AIDS and things like that. So. Uh, if you're worried about spreading sexually transmitted diseases, even if you're not worried about, um, um, even if you're not fertile, even if you're on birth control pills, uh, and you're not worried about pregnancy, you should still be worried about STDs. And so condoms are a good idea, even if you're taking birth control or have the implants or IUDs or anything else, to use a condom to stop the spread of a sexually transmitted disease. Um, they work about, you know, 90% of the time. Um, they're real effective if you add a spermicide to them. So again, you know, the perfect rate is, is really good, but the reality, because people forget to put them on or they break or they don't put them on right, so they're not real, not real effective. So diaphragms and cervical caps, they're something that you insert and it kind of covers the cervix. Uh, typically people will add a spermicidal jelly to that as well. So again, it's a barrier method. This doesn't really stop STDs, okay, because uh, the, the, the semen is still going to be in the vagina, so you can still get an STD, so it's not a way to protect from that. Um, you typically have to get one fit from a physician, so it's the right size. Um, you can put it in up to 18 hours before intercourse and leave it in for a whole day, so if you've got a nice you know, Valentine's Day evening planned, you can think ahead and, and be ready just in case. Really effective. Um, 
if uh, if used correctly, but unfortunately, people forget. Don't do it right. Don't get it in there like it's supposed to. Forget the spermicide. So not 80 percent. IUDs. Uh, this is probably the most common reversible contraceptive that people use worldwide. So it's something you put inside the uterus. A, a physician does this, um, and it stays there for a while, uh, for many years actually. It could be you know several years. Uh, there's one called uh, copper tea, so it's actually a piece of copper, and there's no hormones involved with this particular one. It's just the copper, and the copper kind of acts like a spermicide and kind of keeps the uterus kind of irritated <laughs> so that you don't get implantation. Um, it can cause cramping, so some people don't like it. Uh, there's other IUDs that do have hormones, so you put those in, they release hormones, um, and what they do is they cause a thickening of the cervical mucus, they suppress the endometrium, uh, they prevent ovulation. Um, sometimes you have spotting, sometimes not. Um, but a lot of people like those because you get all the benefits of the hormonal uh, birth control, and, but you don't have to think about it. Just put in, leave it, and forget it for, for several years. And then, of course, there's permanent sterilization. So this is what you do when you reach that point in your life, like, I don't want any more kids, I'm done. Uh, and so there's two ways. Uh, so this is where, uh, with the male, you can cut the vas deferens or the ductus deferens. We call that a vasectomy. And for the female, you will cut the uh, fallopian tubes, or we call that a tubal 